in polymorphism and abstraction, we really have to make sure that we understand inheritance first before we can really understand these two because inheritance is part of the structure. And how polymorphism is going to work is that when we do inheritance, at runtime, we're going to be able to fill in the dots on exactly which of the options you want to not just inherit from, but derive from as well. So you can create the overall object and then define the exact later exact behaviors later as the code has progressed. That's where runtime polymorphism comes into play. Now, what does that look like? So in example number one, you can tell right off the bat, hey, there's inheritance. All of these are dogs. There's English Spaniel, Chihuahua, French Poodle. The only thing that's really different to keep things simple is honestly their two strings, or actually it's their barks, to be honest with you, to tell you exactly that they're different barks. But anyway, Here's where we get to use simple polymorphism. This isn't really runtime polymorphism. It's right here where I say dog, and I'm creating an array called dog collection of dogs. Now, by the way, notice once I get in there, then I tell it what type it is, and notice the empty set of parentheses behind there, so you know I'm basically creating a new instance of a chihuahua, a French poodle, an English spaniel. That's how I can get away with doing that. So I know it's going to be dogs, but I can wait later on to say which ones do they really need to be. Now, here I'm not waiting too much longer. That's why this really isn't a runtime example. This is just setting it up so that we know we have dogs and we're able to do that. And then we use our normal for loops and do whatever we want on go ahead and set things up. But I can use some polymorphism to set things up to say, hey, it's going to be a dog. This one happens to be a French poodle. This one is a chihuahua. But there's other reasons why we would want to use this too. So here's another example of a simple one. Again, these are all spelled out. So we haven't gotten really to runtime polymorphism, and that's really next, so bear with me here. Notice the overall structure again. This time it is a little bit different. We're having two sets of levels when it comes to doing some derivation or inheriting from animal. We have animal and animal equals new chihuahua. Yeah, chihuahua is part of an animal, so that's how we can get away with that. We have animal.display, that's okay because we have a display here. And then we have animal.bark. And notice it says wrong here. And the bad part is, is that that first line is just too generic. I'm going to have to cast this eventually into Chihuahua just to let me know hey, exactly where do I want the bark coming from because you'll notice I've got it in a couple different aspects here. And that's going to be an issue that we have to talk about or, well, we, we're going to talk about it, let's say, say the least. We have a dog equals new chihuahua, dog and chihuahua right there. And we have a dog bark. And now again, both of them share that one. We're, so we're going to be using that one there because it's from dog. So that's okay. And then we have our bird chirp. And again, we've got, let's see here, chirp. There's two chirps there. So we can get away with it. So again, simple, but not really useful for what we want to do it yet. But at least want to show you the format of the simple version of it. 